What a good thing. You can all go out for a walk this morning, said Mother to Jean, Harry and Peter. It's a lovely day. Oh, good, said Jean. Can we get onto the river, Mother? There may be a few boats out. Very well, said Mother. But you be very careful so as not to fall in. It's so nice and sunny, said Peter. I guess we'll be as hot as can be. Need we put our coats on, Mum? Of course you must, said Mother. It isn't summer now. And scarves, please. There's a cold north wind blowing, and I certainly don't want you all in beds with colds. Oh, Mother, scarves too. We'll be cooked, said Harry. Well, you must be cooked then, said Mother firmly. Coats and scarves, please, and no nonsense. The children were cross about the scarves. They all hated scarves and gloves and Wellington boots and simply would not put them on if they could get out of it. They went to the cloak room and took down their courts. Just when the doorbell rang and Jean peeped into the hall to see who it was. It's Mrs Jones, she said to the others. She'll keep Mother talking all morning. We'd better not go and say goodbye or she'll keep us talking too. We can all slip out of the back way then, said Harry. Come on, everyone. I say, as Mother won't see us go, should we forget to put our scarves on, said Naughty Peter. It's so hot. It is hot, said Harry. We really shall be cooked in them, but Mother did say we were to put them on. But she won't know if we don't, said Peter. Peter, don't be so perfectly horrid, said Jean. You know Mother trusts us to do as she says. I call that downright deceitful. It's just simply dreadful of you. Anyone would think you didn't love Mother when you talk like that. Well, I do said Peter sulkily. You'd better show it then, said Jean, tying her long woollen scarf firmly round her neck. Harry tied his scarf on too, looking rather red. Peter stood sulkily in the cloak room. The others didn't wait for him. They ran out into the garden and made their way to the gate that led into the lane. After a minute, Peter joined them. Harry and Jean looked at his neck. He tied his scarf round just as they had. Jean was glad. It made her angry and unhappy when Peter was deceitful. She took his arm. "'Good old Peter,' she said. But Peter was still rather sulky, and he shook off Jean's arm. So she let him walk by himself and ran on ahead with Harry. They soon came to the river. There had been a lot of rain, and the river was swollen and ran very fast. The children threw bits of stick into it and watched them whirl away. Soon they met George and Mary and began to play games with them. George had a ball, and the children stood in a ring and threw the ball to one another. If somebody missed, they had to kneel on one knee. If they missed again, they had to kneel on both knees. It was such great fun. Suddenly the ball went crooked and Mary couldn't catch it. It rolled away and away, right into the edge of the river. Mary raced after it, afraid it would roll right into the river. But it didn't. It stopped just at the edge. Mary stooped to pick it up and caught her foot and root, and she fell and rolled down the bank and splash! There she was in the river. George gave a scream. Mary can't swim! Mary can't swim! Quick! Oh, do come and save her! The four children raced to the river and looked down into the water. Mary had been swept out a little way and caught hold of an old branch that had fallen to the bed of the river and stuck there. He had just saved her from being swept right away with the current. Oh, save me! Save me! cried Mary. This branch won't last very long. It's, cr- it's cracking already! If only we had a rope, cried Harry in despair. How can we save Mary? There's no one about. Oh, what should we do? What should we do? The branch that Mary was clinging to gave a loud crack and Mary screamed. Quick, quick, the river's taking me away. The branch is breaking. Jean, Harry, take off your scarves and give them to me, cried Peter suddenly, tearing his own scarf off his neck. Quick, I'm going to knock them together and then I think they'll just reach Mary. The three children tore off their long woolen scarves. Peter knotted them all together quickly and tightly. Then, with the other children holding on tightly to his waist so that he should not fall in, he bent over the bank and swung the scarf rope right over the river to poor Mary. Crack! The branch broke in two. The little girl was swept away, but she just managed to snatch at the scarf rope. She held on tightly as she could, and Peter held on too. Hold tight! Hold tight! he yelled. I'll pull you in, but do hold tight. The scarves are very strong. With the others holding him fast, the little boy pulled hard at the scarf rope. Slowly Mary came nearer the bank. At last she reached it. Peter lay flat and reached his hands to her. She was pulled up to the grass above, dripping wet, frightened and cold, but safe. Oh, oh, thank you, Peter, cried Mary. Even George was crying, for he had been very frightened. You're so clever. However did you think of making a rope with those scarves? Oh, Peter, just suppose you hadn't worn your scarves today. We almost didn't, said Peter in a small voice. I think I was rather mean about it, but I'm jolly glad I did just what Mother said now. So are we, said Harry and Jean, and they both gave Peter a big hug. Come on, Mary, you must get home straight away and be dried. 
So off they all went, and you know, they never forgot they saved Mary's life by obeying their mother that morning. You simply never know.